Hello. In this lecture, we'll be talking about the constructs and principles of measurement. So, first off, what is measurement? You should remember this from our last lecture. Right? Measurement is the assignment of numbers or objects to events. In the social sciences, we link this um, specifically to quantitative research, right? So, in measurement and education, what are the types of things that we measure in schools? So, things like um, success, achievement, um, aptitude, intelligence maybe. Um, we might be measuring other things like height, weight, vision. Um, we're talking about health out outcomes. Uh, we might be measuring reading fluency or math fluency, right? Um, we might measure typing speed if we talk keyboarding or how fast a child can run a mile if we're, if we're a PE teacher, right? Um, error in measurement. So think back to your science class. How exact can we measure anything? Remember that all measurement is an approximation. So if we look at this picture, right, um, on the ruler, we're measuring that egg, but we can only measure, we can estimate um, in the tenths of an inch, right? It's somewhere between three and four tenths of an inch, right? So this goes doubly sure for assessments in education, right? When we get a score on a test, we're, there's some error in measurement. We're only getting an approximate measure of a student's achievement or an approximate measure of their aptitude. All of the measurements we use have some sort of error. So it's important that we're keeping in mind that there's error in that measurement, that nothing is exact. Um, when I talk about a construct, what do I mean by a construct? A construct is, sim is um, simply just what I'm trying to measure. Usually, I can't directly measure the things I'm interested in education, right? I can't take an MRI of a kid's brain and, and take out a ruler and measure what a kid knows about addition or subtraction, right? I just have, um, I have to take an estimation. That construct is that um, invisible thing I'm trying to measure, right? That, their achievement in math, their knowledge of the Civil War. It's our constructs. We're going to hear that a lot in our lab activities. So our construct is what I'm trying to measure. So what are some constructs we measure in education? Of course, achievement or knowledge or understanding and content areas. And um, this week, we're going to focus on affective characteristics. So we might be measuring things like self-concept or self-efficacy in math or attitudes about reading or interests in science, right? So we have those affective domains as well as um, achievement um, or aptitude or intelligence, right? So constructs, things that um, I can't directly measure, but I might be interested in education. Um, so then we can talk about operational and theoretical definitions. And those are really important um, when I'm talking about what I'm measuring. So my theoretical definition is how I define that construct um, theoretically. So if I say self-concept is defined as the way in which I perceive my abilities, right? So that's a theoretical definition. That's how I've defined it. Um, achievement in math is defined by my ability to add and subtract two-digit numbers, okay? My operational definition is how I make that happen. So what does my test look like? I've operationalized achievement in mathematics by having a series of two-digit addition and subtraction problems, right? Or I've operationalized self-concept by having a series of questions about self-concept. So operational is what I'm actually doing to measure it. So, um, so we talked about those examples, right? So, um, so how do we know if our oper operationalized definition is good? There should be a match between our operational and our theoretical definitions. So if I defined achievement in mathematics to include geometry, computations, addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, and measurement, but my entire test was just addition and subtraction, then I wouldn't have a good operational definition, right? I didn't assess the entire construct. So I don't have a good match between my operational and theoretical definitions. So that um, we call that match between operational and theoretical definitions validity. So we know we have a good operational definition if I have validity. If there's a match between what I want to measure, what my theoretical definition is, and what my operational definition is. And talk about validity in a lot of ways. And it's really 
am I measuring what I say I'm going to measure? It's that alignment between my construct and my operalization. We can also think about validity in terms of convergent and discriminant validity. Um, so convergent validity is when I have the same construct measured by different methods. So for example, if I have um, if I have the end of course exam and I have the test I wrote myself, so I have the state test and my test, same construct, two different methods, I should have similar scores on the same thing, right? If they're both measuring math achievement, I should have similar scores on both tests, right? Discriminant would be two different constructs given by the same method. So if I had the math test and the reading test, same method, both standardized tests, but I should get different scores, right? Some kids should do better on reading and some kids should do better on math. That would give me discriminant validity. If I got really similar scores on math and reading and the math test had a lot of um, word problems, I might think that that math test was really measuring reading and not math scores, right? It wouldn't give me discriminant validity. So convergent validity, the score should be the same because they're measuring the same content. Um, and discriminant validity, I should get different scores because they're measuring different things. Does that make sense? So we talked about some examples. You might take some time to practice writing some examples of convergent and discriminant validity. I'll be asking you to come up with some examples of this when you write your labs later on. And finally, you'll hear me talk a lot about an instrument. What do I mean when I say create an instrument? An instrument is simply the thing you're going to use to measure something. So an instrument might be the content exam that you write. It might be the survey that you design. It might be the rubric that you're using to assess a performance assessment. The instrument's simply the tool that you're using to assess with. So that is all of the terms that we have to learn for measurement this week. So um, good job.